All right, let's look at a couple more things of jQuery Mobile. I want uh, to set up a way to create a side panel. This is uh, very common in many apps. You want to swipe over and a panel appears on the side. There's a way to do that pretty easily with jQuery Mobile, which would be pretty complex in plain old HTML. So um, I just have to remind myself it's one of these, I think it's just called panel. Uh, yeah, right there, panel widget. So let's look on the left side here, panel widget, pop-up, navigation, panel widget. So the, the way that this uh, site is, you're going to see a lot of documentation. You're going to figure out which is the one that you need. You're going to read the documentation and apply the code. I'll go to the very first one here, just panel. Panel widget panel. So when you were looking at that panel widget, click on the first panel. Explanation. Flexible by design, panels can be used for navigation, forms, inspectors, and more. Example, left panel. So if you click on this one, you see how this panel flies over the content as an overlay. I can close it, reveal different kind of animation. This one the main content scrolls over, and there's content behind it, like on another level. And then push is that that side panel pushes into view and pushes out the main one. Question? Will close panel always exist, or can you remove that button? You know, like sometimes if you just, if you click on it to the outside of the page, would it disappear? Yes. It's also built in that you can click outside of it and it will go away. Without putting that closed panel X, right? Yes. Okay. That is optional. Although, <coughs> sometimes it's good to be redundant because in user experience testing, there's so many levels of ability and so many people understand, how do I close this? I don't see a close button. So, you know, depending on your demographic, if you've got a certain demographic that will get it, they don't need that close. But if you have a wider demographic of people that, where's the close button? Better put a close button. So the way it works is the position of the panel is outside the default value, etc. So the way it works is we have a content area, which we then have to add a data display. Um, here's the full example where the panel markup goes. So a panel must be a sibling to the header, content, and footer elements inside a jQuery page. So basically, full example. If I've got, they're using here the generic div, we're using section. They've got section, <coughs> data roll, page. They've got their header, their content, their footer, and then their section ends. They're saying, create this element inside of a page, then inside of the page, also we're not going to use div, we're going to use something else here data roll panel with an ID so that we can link to it to open it up. So the secret is we need some sort of element with a data roll of panel which needs a unique ID and then whatever content inside of it. And this element must exist inside of a parent page element. Let's say then in our project at the moment we've got this home screen and maybe an about screen. Uh, either screen doesn't matter. Let's do it on the home screen. It might be easiest. On the home screen, I want to create a side panel. So based on what the documentation is saying, we need to add an element for that content in that page. Back to Notepad. Finding your first section, your home section. Section data roll page, uh, here we go, uh, data roll uh, ID. So the documentation says this should be a child of this section data roll page. And the code further says it's, be, it's above your header, above your article, above your footer. So you give yourself some space inside of the section. They use div, which is a generic container and it works fine. But I want to use the more modern correct way which is aside. An aside. Some of these 
elements, most of these elements, header, footer, come from traditional print. You know, in a newspaper. In a newspaper, you have a header at the very top, the logo of the newspaper. You have a footer at the bottom of the newspaper. And then you have the main articles in the newspaper. That's why we have article, which doesn't make sense for an app, but that's where it came from. Articles in a newspaper, the main content. In a newspaper, an aside is extra content or a pull quote. It's on the side of an article. It's a little bit extra as part of a main article in a newspaper. So here in HTML, in this web project, in this mobile app, in this section, we're going to create an aside, extra content. And that further needs to have the data role of panel with an ID. So an aside, data role, panel, ID. Let's call this uh, home info. I have the little prefix here that this is related to the home screen, the home section. And it's going to be info, uh, part of this home screen. Inside, we can have anything, but um, let's just put a plain old paragraph, just say stuff. This is going to have pictures, this is going to have paragraphs, this is going to be pretty complex with input forms. What if I have my app and I want to sign in or sign out? I can swipe over, a panel appears, sign in. You've got the first name, last name, password. We'll just put stuff. So this is a this is a complete section, not section, this is a complete element with a unique ID that has a lot of built-in animation, positioning, sizes, etc. with data roll panel. If we want to open the screen, we need some trigger, some button. If you still have it, I'm going to repurpose that button that doesn't do anything anymore. Remember I had that page 2 button in the main article. We had this button that would go to page 2, which has now been supplanted by the actual nav bar. So I just need a link. A tag, href, it's a button, whatever. I'm having it go to second page. You can make it say open panel. Obviously, at the moment, this is all just um, for the sake of learning it. It can be anything you want. This button is going to open the panel. What else do I need to do to complete this link? Change the href. Change the href. This is no longer pointing to some place called page 2. I want it to point to that aside I created. Home info. Pound home info. This is always going to have a pound sign. Because all of these hrefs are pointing to some ID. And the pound sign is a shorthand for an ID. So a button with whatever text pointing to a specific element, an element called home info. And remember, in Notepad++, if you double-click to select an element, it should highlight the other instances of it throughout your code. If you double-click to select home info, it should highlight, yeah, that's going to go to my home info aside, my side panel. And when you run it on that home screen, you click that open panel, you get a side panel. No built-in close button, nothing. And then if you click outside of it, it closes it. If I was running this on a real device, I'd be able to swipe. I'd be able to swipe over to close it. But on the web here, I don't have a touch screen. But this goes over. I didn't specify how it's going to appear. So there was a built-in, I think it's reveal. Yeah, it's a reveal. There's a built-in animation. It, the front content revealed, or went out of the way, to reveal the back content. We need to add the data roles of what kind of animation. Which are data display, overlay, or push. 
data display. Uh, the display mode of the panel is set by the data display. The value of the attribute is whatever, meaning that. Specify overlay for the panel to appear on top of the page content. A third one. And this is added to... Let's see, do we add it to the A tag or to the page? I think it's the A tag. So href, data role, blah, 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 data transition, data display. For example, push. Let me confirm that. Um, no, because it's a different animation. But I think, um, actually, I think we added over to the side. That's not quite clear, but we can figure that out. Yeah, you add it to um, you add it. You add it to the aside itself. So in this case, that button no doesn't need the data transition of slide. We're not quite sliding over to a page anymore. So in this case, we don't need data transition slide. The animation for the panel is set on the panel itself. Aside, data roll panel. I like to keep IDs as the last item, so I added data display. This will be displayed as an overlay. Valid our overlay, reveal, and push. Reveal is the default. You see you don't have to have it all memorized, you just look it up in the documentation. And so I've, now I've got a panel that overlays on top of the content that already exists. Or content that can push the other content away. See that? That comes into play and it pushes that off to the side. Position of the panel is set by data position attribute. The default value is at the left, meaning it will appear from the left edge. Specify data position right for it to appear from the right edge. Doesn't fully explain for you to add it to the element or to the link, but I'm going to assume the element. Data position <coughs> right to the aside. Goes on the right. Yes. So on the jQuery uh, mobile page, it looks that when you um, resize it, it comes up with that little list icon in the mm -hmm. upper left. Is that just literally making the icon and then making it open the panel whenever you click it, like you mean like, like we're doing here? You mean like this? So when I resize jQuery, this yeah. like that? Yes. This is they've got their data role header. And then they've also got that icon, which I believe is data icon equals bars. And then that is pointing to the aside. Okay. So it's exactly what we've been doing here. They, they practice what they preach. Okay. So we can do that as well. We can add an icon to the header, uh, and the icon is bars. And then it would do that. These are panels. You can further read showing, well, panels from outside pages. You can actually link to content that's in an external file elsewhere. You can also have dynamic content. Here it is opening, closing it. So it goes on. The default is, you know, clicking the link that opened it or swiping or the escape key. You know, how many of you thought of pressing escape? Even pressing the escape key will close it. So those are some ways to close it. Uh, to turn off the behavior of swipe to close, we can add data swipe close false to the panel. If you don't want the person to be able to swipe it away, you can turn that off. 
We also have the ability to add data dismissible and other things. And then in the actual close button, the example in jQuery mobile site has an obvious close button. Ours doesn't by default. We never set it up. And the way that's set up in, in there is adding some kind of link that takes you back to where you came from, pound, home, and adding data rel, data relationship, close. So you can simply copy that if you want to have an obvious close, pan, a close button. Close panel. This is supposed to go to pound home. This aside is in the home section. There's stuff there. I don't have that fancy with any data roll button, data roll icon. I don't have any of that. It's going to be a plain old ugly link. But the idea is it's going to take you back to the home screen in the relationship. It's a closed button. Because you have the ability to close the panel by clicking outside of it, swiping it out of the way, pressing escape on the keyboard. But redundancy is often good when making these websites and apps. You don't want to confuse your users. We'll have a deeper discussion. That's called user experience. That's a big topic of how do you make an, uh, an app that doesn't confuse or frustrate your users. User experience. It's an art and a science, which we'll talk about more later. The one trick is redundancy. When you make it obvious for people to do things, you'll guide them to do what you want. Data roll button, obviously. Data icon, uh, I think cancel is a good one. Data dash icon POS position, no text. This will create then an icon with no text with an icon. It's not cancel, it is. What is it? It's not cancel. Data icon clear. What is that icon? So if it doesn't know what the icon is, it just gives you a blank icon. But there's an icon to cancel. What's it called? Delete. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. That little X is delete. Data dash icon delete. Gives you an X. I haven't positioned it on the corner and all of that other stuff. I do have to kind of set it up. But now I have a close button without a without text because I have data icon position POS no text. <laughs> if I didn't have that attribute, then I have button with a close. Data icon pass. Data icon position, no text, then omits the text, just the icon. I have to further style it, position it at the top or whatever, and I have a close button. So showing this side panel, I think it's a very useful widget. It's a very useful element of jQuery Mobile. Not everyone is going to need it. If you're making your own app, you may not need that. So you learn this, but you may never need it. That's fine. That's why the jQuery Mobile website is set up in a way with all of those sort of chapters on the left side. I need to work with some of these things for my app. So I'm going to go learn how this widget works. I never, I'm never going to need this, uh, this range slider widget, so I don't really need to know it. And that's how things are often done. You have a 600-page book, but you don't really need to go through all 600 pages. Maybe you look on the index, table of contents, and look up. This is what I need right now, a way to make forms with a date picker. So you go look it up in the book. The books that I recommended for the class are like that. They're very good you know, reference books. Um, they don't need to go through them page by page. Although I do like the sequence of those books as well. 
So here, I need to know how to make, well, I want to learn how to make something where, I don't know what it's called, but I want to make something so that it shows you like a preview and you click it and it shows you more. We have that kind of widget as well, that kind of element. Uh, here they call it a collapsible set. So this is a collapsible set here as well. See that? I click and that opens up to show you more. There's sub-elements. It's a collapsible set. I kind of wish that the jQuery mobile was also a little bit linear in, in, in that it says read here, then here, then here, then here. It's kind of a bit more like, here's all the stuff. You check it out. Um, the only linearity really is the home and the introduction. Besides that, you kind of skip around. But here, I want to learn how to make this collapsible set. I want to have content. We'll do this in the About screen. I want, to, I want it to preview something and then show me more. So if you look here, the first one, collapsible. Uh, actually, the third one, collapsible set. This is what I want. I want to see you know, a preview of something. We can write whatever text here and change that icon. When you click on that, it opens up to show you more stuff. And this more stuff can be anything. Text, pictures, a form, your user icon, data from a database. I want to do this. So it explains what it is, various examples, icons, everything. And then how it actually works, you can look in the view source. The idea here is we're going to need a div data roll collapsible set. You can have a theme. And then each individual one of these is a div data role collapsible. The text that appears is a heading. The content inside is anything. A, head, a P tag, an A tag, a video, whatever. So we can do this one. In the About screen, we'll create a very simple collapsible. Div data role collapsible set. So I've got my home section. If I go over to my about section in the article, on this one I would use the generic div. There isn't like a separate specific element um, to create this. Div is fine. Data role. Collapsible set. That data theme stuff, don't really need it. Not mentioning it, we'll keep it on the plain gray. But if you want the other colors, we add data theme. And then each individual item is another div. Okay, data role of collapsible. The text that appears is where we've got these H3s. The text that appears is, you know, item one. Stuff. The other collapsible. Another data role collapsible. Another H3. Item 2, another paragraph, stuff. And that's it. Different data role to accomplish something else is a little more complex. It mixes a couple of things together. You have all of these divs which are, which are generic containers. So all of the Content is in this parent div, collapsible set. Each individual item that you click to open up is a different div, collapsible. Any content you want in here is valid.
have an actual graphic, but we can put a graphic or a form or a video or anything as long as it's inside of this div, which is part of that whole collapsible set. I would further read the documentation to change the icons. This is going to have a generic icon, the open and close icon, a plus and a minus. If I want arrows or faces or other things, I have a way to change the icons. So I'm in my About screen, and I've got Item 1, and that opens up Item 2. And so this is an example, again, not everyone might need this, but if you need a way to open up a panel, to display more content, you know, let's say this screen is an example of part of our inventory. <coughs> We've got one product of our inventory, and a person cares about, you know, the, the dimensions. So this one would say dimensions, and inside of it, all the information about width and height and weight and all of that. And over here, we have a different set of data, and that's linked all together, and that opens up and closes. I don't want to see all of it at once. I want the person to see what they want. So I set up these collapsible sets. Pretty much with all of these jQuery mobile widgets, I can add multiple ones. More than one side panel, more than one collapsible set, buttons, nav bars, I guess. There's a way to put a nav bar at the top of the screen and the bottom of the screen. We have all of these Lego pieces to put together for a project. So with this, if it's a little too fast, again, we're just playing with this. We're not doing anything that meaningful just yet. I'm introducing the various concepts and the syntax of how this all works, all of these data roles and stuff. I'm not going to mention every single one today, and I'm, I'm not going to go through the whole site teaching you every single one of them. I hope you take the time on various days of the weekend, etc. Well, how does this grid work? What is this grid? How do forms work? So I'm not going to go through all of these. So we'll do one more. Again, if it's a little too fast, you check it out yourself. The website's there 24 hours a day. I'm going to put my code in the folder. The video will be uploaded. And um, not everyone needs this. We'll look at one more and we'll see, well, I don't need that one either, but here's just another kind of widget that we can work with. And then you use the Lego pieces to create your, your own particular app. We'll look at one more. It's called a list view. Is really cool. If you look at list view, <coughs> the simple version of it, you know, it's a list of items. A better version is actual links. There's also a version that's kind of like self-contained. So I want to go, I'm going to see on a screen a list of possibilities to click on, all grouped together really nice. And then I click on the first one, and it takes me to a different screen with all that information. What's really cool is it's got a built-in filter, search ability. So as I start typing something here, C, it's going to filter it to only show things with starting with a C. The opposite is reveal. 
nothing is displayed until you start typing something here. And then it filters itself. Oh, I want to make that one view source. Uh, a little more complex with a form so that it can search. Needs an ID, data type, search, placeholder, bullet points, etc. Maybe I want a simpler one, but with some divisions. This is my mailbox. These are my contacts. How does that work? Bullet points, data role, list view, data inset true, data divider, each individual list item, data role, list dash divider. You have to write it that way. The actual item is a list item with with a link. These links here are not going anywhere at the moment, but those would point over to a different screen for the inbox or the friends. Auto dividers. Count bubbles. If you want some text to appear on the edge there, these are not dynamic as it's showing you here, but they can of course be set up to dynamically change as necessary. The basic example is that you write you know, within the list item, you write the actual value and add a span around it with a class. It's not dynamic, but it could be programmed via JavaScript to actually change as necessary. Icons, flags, thumbnails, split button, so you have this plus this. You've got the code there, how to set all of that up. Much more complex, but that's still much simpler than writing it all by hand. Formatted content, theming it, setting it up for forms, Look at that, that's combining a collapsible element with a list view element. So that's doing what we did plus more. Yes? For the forms, for this class, would be um, attached to a database or, we, or is that another? In short, yes. We are going to use forms and we are going to attach to a database. The specific kind of database and such will be a topic for later, but we will use forms to capture and store and process real data in a database. So here it is, built, uh, con, uh, combining collapsibles and list views. So I think maybe we'll just go this far if you want to try to do it yourself. Look at the example, pick one you like, do the view source, and see about how you can add it. You can probably just copy and paste it, you know, select that copy and paste, or write it manually and see how it fully works. But the jQuery mobile project is this open source project free for you to use for you to create interfaces. Here's a way to create a date picker, but what do you actually do with it? That's still up to you for you to program and all of that. So this is, I think, a very good starting point for an interface, and there's plenty of other projects out there that can <coughs> do it in a different way. Question? Into the mobile app. jQuery mobile um, has a version of search that we're looking at here but a more complex version that actually searches throughout your whole uh, project I don't think it has that exactly but we can search and look for tutorials and other examples of setting that up and plug it into our project it's kind of modular this I want this module plus this module and I combine it So, um, I think this is as much as we'll look at jQuery for the moment. I would recommend you look at these other items. And everything that we did together uh, today was our introduction, which when we come back next time, we're, we're going to start to see, well, if you've got a little experience in jQuery mobile, let's actually do something with it. Next time we will actually start to create a login and logout system. That's going to be a lot of JavaScript take us several days 
but we're going to sign in with a username, with a password, sign out, check if the person is signed in or not so that they don't have to log in every time manually. And we're going to do that with JavaScript, but we're going to use jQuery to create the interface quickly. And we will be able to do it relatively quickly, again, with this, you know, this template file, copy and paste. I want to create a brand new screen, I just fill in the details. I'll put the example code in the folder in a moment. Um, I would recommend you practice this at home, rewatch the video, and um, jQuery Mobile is our tool just to create a quick interface. We will customize fonts and colors later. But we'll start the, in the login, logout next time. General questions on what we looked at today? So it's all about data roles, which one? Having those three files, those connections that we did early on, plus the viewport there. So connecting to the CSS file, connecting to those two libraries, those activate these data roles and such. Without them, it doesn't do anything visually interesting or correct.